if you're anything like me, you miss the days of classic games. You know, the Super Nintendo, um, the uh, regular Nintendo, like the NES, and especially the Nintendo 64. Um, I'm, I'm going to be 20 in October, so I grew up um, mostly on the 64. I do own an, an, an NES, but that's basically like for my brothers. They're older. My brother and sister, they're older than me, and so they really played that. But I grew up mostly on the Nintendo 64. And when I found out that there was an N64 emulator for OS X, I, I kind of jumped on it and I wanted to research it more. But, you know, you'd have to play it with the keyboard. And you can't play a Nintendo 64 game on a keyboard, you know, I mean, they have the Z button. You just don't have the N64 experience. It would just be too hard. And then, so then I was Googling and I thought, you know, I have a PS3 in my room. And so I have a controller. My computer has Bluetooth. Could I hook up my PS3 controller to my to OS X? And sure enough, you can. So this is going to be sort of a like a fun video. Just some advice, I guess, if you're looking for something like this. This is going to be a review, or I guess really like an overview of 64s for OS X. So I guess let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a, a driver to download that lets OS X recognize the PS3 controller. So that that's provided in a link right down below. Click that and you can download the driver. It just allows you to connect the controller via Bluetooth. I'm not sure if whether or not you can just plug this in like via USB and have it work. I haven't tried it, but I know I do have it confirmed working on Snow Leopard 10.6.7 over Bluetooth and it does work great. So now moving on, you're also going to need 64s. Now this right here, this application, it's free. However, if you want to be able to save, you need to pay for it. It's $16. It's highly worth it if you enjoy playing the Nintendo 64. Um, the games, as you'll see soon, they run so good. Like It's like I'm playing on the Nintendo 64. The frame rate is excellent. It, it really does take you back. And uh, the third thing that you're really going to need is some ROMs. Now I... I do have, I have owned all the games, for example, here's uh, Nintendo, here's Super Mario 64, that's one of my favorite games ever for this console, and I do own it, so I went and I googled the ROM, don't, I'm not gonna um, tell you guys where to download ROMs, and I highly discourage you to download ROMs that you don't own the game for, so as you'll see, you know, I have uh, GoldenEye, Mischief Maker, Super Mario 64, but however, I do own all those games, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch it here and also keep in mind that I, I paid for it, I paid $16 for it. And so when you launch it, you're going to come across a black screen like this. Well actually first, um, you're going to want to pair the Bluetooth controller. So now just like the PS3, all you do is you hit this. And as you can see the lights up there are blinking. And if I come here to Bluetooth, sometimes it takes a second, PlayStation 3 controller, it is now paired and we're good to go. So now you want to launch 64s. Now come up to File, Open Recent. As you can see, I just played some Super Mario 64, Mischief Makers, and GoldenEye. Those are the only three I have right now. Uh, I, I do look forward to getting, you know, like Extreme G and things like that. Those, like I said, games I all own, games I grew up on, they're great. So I'll go ahead and I'll launch Super Mario 64. It's me, Mario. So it see, it works perfectly. Hello. So now I'll take you a little more through the emulator. Turn that down. We're going to go to configure controllers. Uh, as you can see, the PS3 is here. However, you can use your keyboard and mouse, but like I said, it just takes away the experience. And I do have to say, the PS3 controller does work very good on here. Like, um, I usually use the L2 as, a tr as the Z because it's kind of like a trigger anyway, like when you push it. So it, it does work well for a Z. Oh, I hit new instead of configure. Okay, we'll go to configure. And Z button is the button 9, that's what I was using. Um, the C buttons I use, in most games they work as the camera, so I figure that with the right analog stick they work great. So to configure buttons, you just simply highlight it and move in the direction that you want. So C up would be here, C down would be here, C left would be here, and C right would be here. So they're just all, you know, um, you can set them up however you want. It does work very well. So now, um, we'll continue under some preferences here. And you can also select, um, graphic settings, um, just different things like that. Enable memory expansion pack, you know, like the top of the 64, how it has that little memory expansion. You can enable that, um, but it, it sometimes it does cause um, compatibility problems. I haven't run into any so far, but I figure as long as I don't need it, then I'll just have it off. Uh, use high quality audio processing, plug in audio. Honestly, I use both and I don't really find much of a difference. Graphics high resolution rendering, otherwise, you know, you're, um, it's a lot blurrier, it's a lot um, 
anti-alias thing really kicks in there so if you turn that on it looks like a Nintendo 64 and uh, this does take a decent amount of video RAM so um, on a MacBook I'm not quite sure how good this will look you might have to turn high res off but um, I'm not sure it all just depends on your graphics settings and your graphics card but that's pretty much it for the settings there's not really too much more about the program other than just play so um, I'll go ahead and I'll push start so I, I'm just using the, tr the joystick here for the selection. And yes, I've only had this game for three days and I already have like 70 stars. You know, I've just been addicted to this game. But um, as you can see, it works great. Sound works. So we'll take you guys through a level here. All right. So as you can see, I mean, like I said, it does run very good. I was impressed. Um, when I, the first time I tried this, I did not buy it. I just got the free version of it. And um, when I saw how well it worked, I just I immediately just bought it. Um, it's just so great, and the fact that you can save does make it awesome. But in this in this game, I have found that it doesn't. When you ever you save, it doesn't save your lives. It just, um, like it'll save all that, the amount of stars you have, but as you can see, I started off with four lives instead of like the 20 I had. So that is kind of annoying, but that's why I usually come here. You can just get lives really quick, and you don't lose one if you die on that level. So, you know, it does work well. But uh, yeah, I'll take you guys through um, a short level real quick. Okay, let me come up here. I'll take you guys through like the the bomb level. Probably just one of the classic ones. So we'll come through here. This is probably one of like the first level that you guys will play. I know it's always the first level I played when I had this game. And we'll do, we'll do the big bomb dude. But yeah, like I said, I mean, the game runs amazingly well. Um, I don't know whether it's just, you know, my graphics card. Like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure how well this would run on, like, a MacBook. I can't confirm that. But on the system I have, it does work great. So we're just going along here. And it's amazing. I used to find that part I just did so hard. And you play these games when you're older. It's a lot of these things just aren't as hard as they used to be. And you of course got your little teleport through now. Can't throw him out of the ring, I learned that the hard way. You have to keep him on here or he jumps back up and you just look kind of stupid. Okay. And as you can see, I beat him. However, I already have the star, so I won't get it again. Oops. Take skill. So there's Super Mario 64, uh, does, like I said, it does work great, and in case I didn't have that star and I wanted to save it, you save the game freeze, and I have a custom made a directory, one for each of my games here, so I just save and overwrite, and there you go. So now I'll load uh, GoldenEye for you guys, open recent, GoldenEye. Classic music. Uh, so now for this game, I do have to configure the control to something else because it's just too hard to play the way I have it. So I always just configure the Z button to be this button up here. Because in a lot of first person shooters, that's how you shoot. So now that that's all configured, move my mouse out of the way. We'll go here, select the mission, we'll do uh, 
we'll do damn just because I'm just playing through this on agent right now obviously it's very easy however I just want to get a feel for this controller because uh, sometimes the joystick is kind of sensitive but this level does demonstrate a glitch that this you can see like all this blurring up here so it does that for only some levels I've noticed that you know levels like facility don't do that but as you can see like that glitching it has I'm not sure why it does that but it does so and like I said, that's not with every ROM. Nintendo 64, I've never had that happen to me. So it could just be the ROM, or it could be the emulator itself. I'm not quite sure. I'll just have to maybe try a different ROM and see if that works. Oops. As you can see, he just shot at me like four times and missed every time. So that's what you get when you play on Agent. It's just very easy. But you, you, you understand if you try this, you know, it is kind of touchy, so you really do have to get used to it first, so Agent is perfect for that. But um, other than that glitching it has up there, like which I said, like I said, I'm not sure why it does that, but um, it is very playable, as you can see, like I have great frame rate. So, but yeah, this video is getting kind of long, but I just wanted to show you guys, you know, the game, or the emulator does work great. Um, it works great with the PlayStation 3 controller. I never knew that 64 games would be very playable with a, a DualShock, but it does work great. So if you guys do want to check this out, you, I highly encourage you to buy the, ver the full version because otherwise, like I said, you can't save and it kind of sucks. But um, just to support him, you know, the great frame rate, you get all the work that went into it. So it's just, you know, it's a great um, emulator to have. And it works on OS X. So people that say you can't game on OS X, I really have no idea what you're talking about. Um, just between stuff like this, you know, we have Steam now, and trust me, the gaming community is going to get a lot better for OS X, like, it already has, so, just emulators like this just take you back to old games, you know, games that you grew up on, so it's very nice, but, uh, if you have any questions about it, I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also check out itechcity.org and add itechcity on Twitter, um, I'll be having a few more videos up here this week, so, and uh, right into next week. So, um, like I said, please buy the, the full version of 60 Force. That's what it's called, 60 Force. Great emulator. It work, like, you, like you just saw, it works great. And I was getting that frame rate even though I was doing a screen capture. So that has to tell you something. So minus the few glitches that uh, gold that I had, both both uh, Mischief Makers and Super Mario 64 never glitch like that ever. So I think it's just the ROM, but we'll have to see. And so, like I said, beginning a disclaimer: don't download ROMs that you don't own the original game for. Please, um, you know, don't do that. It's you know, sort of piracy and all that stuff. So, um, before I ramble anymore, thanks for watching.